Welcome. Welcome. It's time to now go over uh, a new concept that I haven't gone over with you guys before that I've been putting off till now. Um, as you can see, this program has gotten pretty large. Um, it is very common uh, for C programming and C programmers to not have the entire program be in one source file or one .c file. It's common to modularize or split the program up into other files. Um, so what I'm going to go ahead and do is, since we have one source file right now, which is just called main.c, which has all the code we've written up until this point, I'm going to go ahead and add a new one, and I'm going to make it uh, c file. I can find it. I'm going to go ahead and make the new file, and I'm going to call it status.c. And this is going to contain all the status screens that we're going to draw, like the game over screen, and the um, I'm going to make a Mario style status screen showing how many lives you have before you start the game each time. So um, I went ahead and made the new file, so now I can switch back and forth between them, or I can make tabs up here, which is what I'm used to doing. Uh, so I made a status.c, it's currently empty. Now, one of the things that's common uh, when you make an, uh, a program with multiple source files is you need to have kind of your own header file. So you know how we've included like standard io.h and our own APIs? Well, we need to make our own .h file, which contains the references to all of the common stuff that any files in this whole program would need to work. For example, uh, these will contain references to functions and structs that are going to be used commonly throughout the entire program and not just in the individual modules or files. So let's go ahead and go ahead uh, and make a main.h and that's going to be that file. So I just went ahead and created a new file, main.h. There it is. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, switch back and forth now between my main.h's. Um, it created these lines for me, Xcode did. Um, you don't have to worry about these too much. These just make sure that if the file gets included more than once, it won't conflict or register and uh, duplicate the references inside the file. So you can't include main.h more than once. That's what that means. So I'm going to go ahead and add the import, pull the important stuff out of main.c that every file might want to have access to. And already I can tell that all the structs should have references globally throughout all the whole program. So I cut that, put that in main.h. Here's all our structs now in a nice organized place. And of course, main needs to include main.h, and so does our new file status.c. So now both files know everything there is to know about the program. Um, also, main.h should include sdl.h since it's using sdl structures such as surface and texture. So went ahead and did that and then um, I'm going to talk about this new one in just a second here. Um, build succeeded, that's what I wanted to see. So any, any file that's included uh, any file that's included by a file that you include uh, will be included just as if you included it in the original. So that's not a problem. Um, so what else do I need? Uh, well, if, if we ever want to call any of the functions in a file, in main, for example, from another source file, then we would want to create references to those functions, and those references are called prototypes. Um, we're actually not going to do that, so I'm going to leave those out, but I'll explain um, here when we make our next.h file. Well, maybe for the sake of example, I will. So suppose we wanted to call do render from somewhere else. What you would go ahead and do is you'd copy that first line, which is called the function signature, you know, the part right before the curly brace begins. You'd copy this line, you'd paste it, paste it into the main uh, dot, uh, h file and uh, you put a semicolon at the end of the prototype definition which is very important. So functions look like this when you actually define them. When you do a reference to one or what's called a prototype you put a semicolon at the end. That's really important. So now what we've done is we've created a prototype for do render and now do render can be called from say status.c if we wanted to. Now I'm going to go ahead, it's very common whenever you have a .c file you have a corresponding 
.h file, and those two together make up the module and its header. And the header contains the function signatures for the functions inside of the .c file so that other people, including the file, can use it. We're going to do the same thing and make a status.h. And hopefully you'll be able to follow through with what I'm doing here. I'm going to make a function in status.c called init status lives. And that's going to initialize the status screen for showing lives. It's probably going to need a game state reference. And I'm going to make one called shut down the screen to free any memory that it might be using. And of course, in between, we're going to want to draw the status live screen. And those are our three functions. Um, so let's just go ahead and leave them blank to start. And let's go ahead and make prototypes for them in the header. And now that the prototypes exist, I can actually call these functions from outside of main, which keeps the program nice and organized, and just by including the references to the functions by what's ever in the file, which is status.h. So I included status.h. Now when I switch to here, I have functions that I can call from the main.c file. Uh, I just wanted to say that this is how programs avoid complexity and grow without creating one file that's impossible to sift through and read. Uh, common games can have hundreds or more of these C files all over the place properly organized. Um, and some programs can contain even thousands of source files. So um, let me go ahead and add a new variable to our game state. What I'm going to go ahead and do is um, we need to draw... Am I in the right place? Oh, heh, I'm not used to main.h. Uh, we're going to draw labels, and labels are basically going to be text, uh, which I haven't gone over how to do yet, and that's what I'm also going to show you here. So here's our images. So I'm going to add another one, and this will just be our generic label texture, and this will contain any text string that we want to draw. And I also created, um, I included a new API for SDL, SDL TTF for true type fonts. And I created an actual SDL TTF font reference here, which we're going to use to load our font uh, that I've added to the project. And that font is actually right here. It's a freeware font that I found called Crazy Pixel. It's a true type font. So um, the label is actually going to contain the rendered string that we want to render uh, on our status screen. Um, so let's start off with loading the font, which I've already done for us here. Inside load game, our load game uh, method, I load the font by setting it equal to TTF open font, the path to the crazy pixel TTF file, and a point size of 48, which seemed to be about right. And then uh, if I can't find it, I quit out, which is normal for when I can't load a resource. And then when we shut the program down, the very end, I call two, well, actually I do a couple things. In the beginning, before I even call load game, I call TTF init, which is a required function to call to initialize SDL TTF. And at the very end, I call TTF quit. And also, I TTF close font to give back the memory and resources used up by the, uh, the game state font reference. So now we're finally ready to, to get down to business here. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is, if you remember, I actually created a, um, a time for the game that shows how many frames that have been drawn. What we are actually going to do is for the first two seconds or so, or 120 frames, we're going to actually show the status screen before the game even starts. And the way we're going to accomplish that is we're going to add a new uh, variable to game state in our header file, where it is now. And that's going to be called int status. I'll just call it game state. That's actually very confusing because that's the name of the struct. So I'll call it status state. And if this is zero, we'll be um, showing the live status screen. If it's one, we'll be in the game. And if it's two, it'll be game over. So let's just go ahead and define those really quick. Define status state. Uh, lives, zero, one, and two, game, game over. 
And now, if the status of the game, first off, we won't take any input at all, which is all the keyboard input and, and movement of anything in the game. We won't take any of that if the game uh, status state is not equal playing. I'm going to return out of process, or better yet, bad practice to return in the middle of a function. We will only do all this stuff if the game status is playing. And more importantly, I actually need to initialize the status of the game. So we start out in the live state, which will mean we're drawing uh, the live status screen. And inside process, it'll be quite simple. As soon as the time is greater than 120, playing the game. And this will also affect a couple other things such as renders. So when we load into the game, since we know that we're actually going to load right into the, um, the status screen, I'm going to go ahead and actually call, what was the name of that function? Init status lives, which we actually haven't written yet. Pass it the reference to the game. God, I hate it when I do that. And then when we leave that state, which will be right here, I will shut down status lives, which may not have anything. I'm not sure yet. Yeah, it will. Okay, a couple things. Um, I'm going to start out our label texture as null, which will mean that we're not using it. This is important because at the end, I'm only going to free this texture if the label is not null, meaning we've actually set it to something. All right, we're finally ready. We're uh, we got one last piece. We need to make sure that when inside do render, we call. proper draw function for our status when the state is status lives. And we draw the other code, we run our other drawing code when we're in the game. And this is how you do game states. Of course, we'll always present no matter what at the end of the drawing cycle. And I think we're in good shape here to actually write the code for drawing the status. Yeah, I got a minute and a half to do that. I hate rushing in these videos, but I think it would make sense to go ahead and stop here and make this video just be about modularization. And I'll talk about text output uh, next video. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.